If I had listened to what Mama said, I would not be here today. Phonograph record makers discovered a market for the rustic sounds of country music in the 1920s. Victor Records talent scout Ralph Peer brought portable recording equipment to Bristol, Virginia in August of 1927. With these Bristol recordings, which have been referred to as the birth of country music, the first two national recording superstars of country music were discovered, Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family. Mr. Peer, you know, he put an ad uh, in the Bristol paper for all talent to come up and try out. Maybe old A.P. and I, we decided we'd go up. Of course, we didn't think anything about it. Just thought it more or less just a trip. Victor uh, Record Company decided that they could uh, sell uh, country music nationwide. They decided to send a portable studio to the south to get all the folk and hillbilly music and all this uh, music that hadn't been sold before. So when they sent their studio out, Bristol was the first stop. It was a big deal to travel to Bristol uh, back then. And I can remember the cars. They must have not have been very good because they kept having flats. <laughs> back then, I mean, you know, you got out and fixed a flat. You didn't take it to a filling station or somewhere. And, You'd carry these patches along and strike a match and get the patch hot, and then you'd slap it on the inner tube, you know. Tomorrow was our wedding day, but don't know where it is. I think the first time I heard the Carter family was on the radio at night when I was very small. The simplicity of deliverance and the performance in those songs was like, like my life, you know. Things were pretty cut and dried, black and white, straight ahead. And that's the way the Carter family came at you, right in the face, you know, and it felt good. My dad, he was a, a collector, I guess you'd say, of songs. He'd find parts of it and finish up, maybe, enough to make a song out of it. Those were songs that came over, you know, from the old world. The Carter family did such a wonderful job of bringing these to the forefront. And and doing them in a way that people understood, and just to show how these wonderful songs can live forever for hundreds and thousands of years. There was uh, a great influence of the songs that might have come from uh, Ireland, England, and Scotland with those people that came into southwestern Virginia. They would get little pieces of songs, but then there would be songs that they wrote. It was on a day when soldiers wrote the line to those they loved. To mothers, wives, and sweethearts far away. When a fair heart voice had dreaming of a far off southern town, of a dark eyed maiden's waiting day by day. While the band is playing Dixie, I'm humming home, sweet home. There is something about the, the imagery of the Carter family, the, the old time music that I still find very moving. The songs of the Carter family, there's a poignancy there, it's so heartbreaking. Um, the simplicity of what they, they write about, um, I don't know whether we've lost the ability to um, capture that. I think as a genre, maybe we have. They were on a station in Texas. Their theme song was Keep on the Sunny Side, and they sang it like a funeral dirge or something. Keep on the sunny side. And I thought, why don't they sing it fast and sing it happy? And then this bass singer would come in, and he'd sing a few lines, and then he'd drop out, uh, which was AP, of course. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. I said, boy, that's exactly like we used to sing sitting around the house at home. You sing hymns and things. As long as I can remember back uh, as a youngster, age five, six even, when I was first interested in the old country records, some of my very favorites were the Carter family recordings. I sell the morning paper, sir, my name is Jimmy Brown. Everybody knows I am the new boy of the town. You'll hear me yelling a morning star as I run along the street. 
I have no hat upon my head, no shoes upon my feet. I have no hat upon my head, no shoes upon my feet. Uncle A.P., he would sell fruit trees, or he would have an old sawmill somewhere. That was a big priority in his life. He loved music, but the two who really loved to sing and to play music, I think, was Mother and Aunt Sarah. And uh, they would play for fun. Maybell uh, played a style that's easy to play, but it, it was it's original, I guess. She just uh, played melody on the bass strings and rhythm with her finger, and uh, and the wildwood flower, you know, is like the uh, national anthem <laughs> of country music. Mother Maybell was the one that I wanted to learn to pick my guitar uh, like. And um, I learned every one of her songs and every one of Jimmy Rogers' songs, knew all of those. But Mother Maybell was my favorite. Mother Maybell invented this style of playing called the Carter Scratch, which was kind of a, your thumb and your finger, your fingernails kind of scratching on the strings. and like thousands of my friends, it was the first thing we learned. It was this beautiful melodic way of, of uh, sort of playing lead and rhythm at the same time. And that influenced every guitar player I ever met. What she played was accessible. When you heard her play the guitar, it was something a person could do, and it sounded good, and she could do it. And it was just, it was a magical thing. Working with her was like working with an angel in attitude and delivery. I started back when I was a kid. I used to play five-string banjo. In fact, I started playing the auto harp before I could remember, to tell you the truth. And then I started playing five-string banjo, and uh, I took up guitar when I was 13 years old. I met Maybelle Carter about 1948, I guess it was, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, she was 39 years old, and uh, they gave me a job, Maybelle and the Carter girls, and uh, kind of saved my life. I needed work at that time. She played a little tune I liked uh, where she did a lick. You are my flower. And uh, so I wrote a tune about Maybelle, and I loved her so much and still miss her. Yeah, it's called Maybell. for people to realize what they were doing and to put any value on their songs. And you get to looking back, the roots is what you have to keep alive and keep it going. If you let the roots die, there ain't nothing gonna happen. It's gone. 